everyone. Welcome to Pilates with me, Mandy Henderson, in the comfort of your own home. Let's get going. So make sure your feet are shoulder width apart, in steps parallel, and let's just get our shoulders mobilizing. Nice big circles all the way around and back. And then place the hands on the shoulders, and now circle the elbows all the way round and back. As you take this movement with your elbows, trying to make the biggest circle that you can, try and shift the rib cage forwards and backwards. And then we're going to just take a soft arm all the way backwards. Again, great big circles. Just soften the elbows if that's too much for the shoulders. Everything should be getting a little bit warmer. Let's take a shoulder shrug up towards the ears, draw the shoulders down up towards the ears, draw the shoulders down, and then let's just stretch the neck and the top of your shoulders where it should have got all nice and warm. Turning from side to side, just lightly touching your fingertips to your legs, coming back to face forwards, tilting your head from side to side. Just going to have a little check that we are, yes, we are recording. Good, I had a horrible thought then that I was gonna be doing this for the next 40 minutes and it wasn't actually uh, recording. Right, where were we? Uh, so we've done our shoulder rolls, we've done some bits and pieces there, we've had a little stretch of the neck. So when you're stretching the neck, maybe tilt from side to side, maybe just put your hand on your head to uh, help stretch that neck. Take the hand away before you come up to square, over to the other side. Just gently, just placing the hand and the head, you're not really pulling, you're just lightly touching almost. Good, take the hand away and come back up to the top. And then maybe just let the chin drop towards your chest, let it really relax, and then turn your head from side to side. So as I'm looking down, I'm just looking from one side to the other. Brilliant. And then we're just gonna stand in nice, tall posture with your feet a little bit narrower now, hip width apart. Uh, make sure those insteps are lined up with each other. Your weight is evenly distributed between your big toe joint, your little toe joint, and your heel. And we're gonna take a nice breath in, expanding across the rib cage, no lifting the shoulders up. And then as you breathe out, you're gonna take both arms up. And then a breath in as you lower and grow taller. Breath out, so up to the top. Breath in to lower and grow taller breath out. So the moment that you lose concentration, and I'm sure I will do it as we're going through this process, uh, you'll change your breathing around to a natural breath of breathing in as you lift your arms up. But I would like you to try and breathe out. I want you to draw that rib cage down, draw the shoulder blades down in your spine, breathe in and lengthen the spine. And then we're going to add, and it's a little bit harder from this position because we've got our feet slightly apart, we're going to add a knee fold and then placing the foot down. And as you can see, I have to shift from side to side. It's all very telling with that wonderful hip Pilates sign behind, my, behind me. Uh, so you can really see I have to shift from side to side, but hopefully you can also see that I'm not changing anything in my torso. So shoulders and hips are staying really nice and level. No hitching, no shortening, no twisting in the in the pelvis. It's quite a challenge to get from one side to the other. And we're going to use this movement a little bit later. But taking that plumb line, taking your torso across from side to side, try and keep going if you can, I know I'm stopping. Good, shifting all the way across, getting that balance quite quickly, making sure everything is in the correct position. So I talk a lot about a tissue box. You've got the four corners of your tissue box, a nice triangle. So we've got the leg up or the arm up, sorry, not a triangle, a rectangle. So we're lifting and lowering. That tissue box, the four corners, is staying really nice and pristine. There's no twist, there's no distortion. Either leg up or arms up. Good, and I'm sure, well I've definitely forgotten about my breathing because I'm talking too much, but try and just come back to that breathing for the last couple, so big breath out, breath in, breath out, breath in. Brilliant. Okay, let's
let's move on to a hip hinge. So a little mini hip hinge. I've put my hands here because this is where I want to crease. I want to crease at the tops of my thighs, just where the thighs meet the hips. I'm just going to go sideways so you can see. I'm sending my bottom back. The weight is going onto my heels. My knees are just softening slightly. There's no change in my spine whatsoever. It's like I'm just shutting a drawer or a door behind me. And then let, let's hold that there a moment. And let's have the fingertips touching the, touching the hips there and elbows out to the side. And feel like you're nice and broad across your shoulders and just breathe. And then if you can, tapping and lifting the whole of the front of one foot at a time. Just testing that position. Try tapping both feet. If you feel like you're going to fall back, you're in the right position. Uh, but you should be able to maintain that. Shouldn't be too much hard work. No strain on the back, absolutely. The torso, the torso is fixed. You're braced. Belly button gently pulling in. Pelvic floor slightly lifted. And a sense of uh, breadth across your shoulders. And sort of around your elbows as well, everything going out to the side, just like you're trying to bring your elbows out to the side. Lovely, and then come up again. You might feel that just uh, switched on the muscles in the lower back a little bit, and that's absolutely normal. So let's move that position on, let's take that mini hip hinge into a narrow squat. So we've still got the feet quite narrow, just slightly outside your actual hip width apart uh, distance, and then we're going to send the bottom back, we're going to come down the knees are over the toes, so I'm facing forwards. Hopefully my alignment is really good. If you can practice this all in front of a mirror, that would be incredible. Uh, but I'm just going to turn to the side as well to show you that the bottom is going back. There's that hip hinge. I'm keeping my knees above my ankles. My spine, the length of my spine, the shape of my spine doesn't change. It shouldn't change. I'm bringing my arms forwards just as a natural counterbalance. And they're just reaching towards the floor because don't forget that when we, we do a squat the reason we do a squat is to be able to pick stuff up from the floor with uh, keeping our back in its natural curves and we're hinging from the hip so this is all good let's stay down there if you can so those knees above your ankles as much as possible make sure you haven't lifted the chin too much so no wrinkles at the back of the neck keep that chin tucked in keep that nice and smooth and let's have the arms out parallel to the floor. This is already quite challenging, but then if you can, I'd like you to try and just lift those arms up a little bit. So I'm just tipping from my shoulder. This is the only part that's moving slightly. It feels like the shoulder blade is tipping slightly down towards my lower back. It's very grippy in here. That's absolutely fine. It's meant to be. You're holding on there almost for dear life, but that compression of that hip joint is not a bad thing. Make sure your spine is in its natural curves. If you're experiencing any stress in the lower back, make sure you're pulling that belly button in. A couple more if you can. And then let's come up and just give the legs a bit of a shake. Well done. Great. Let's turn the legs out all the way in the hip socket and come to nice, a nice wide second position. And this time we're going to keep the back completely upright. We're still going to hinge from the hips, but as we, uh, as we bend the knees, the hinge happens here, but the knees are going out over the toes. The spine is staying in the same shape. So the angle of the body is the same. It's, it just stays, the torso stays upright as opposed to hinging forwards. But we've still got this um, disassociation, if you like, of the thighs and the torso as we're going down here. So try not to stick the bottom out, try not to let the knees roll in, just go as far as you can, warming up those legs a little bit. Again, we're looking for a good symmetry, knees over the toes, but an equal bend in both legs, no change in the sides of the, the body either. If you can, let's stay down there, raising one heel, pushing it down, raising the other heel, pushing it down, trying not to... Uh, shift your weight from side to side, try and stay quite still. This is strong on the legs, my thighs are getting nice and warm. Good, an equal amount, maybe one more each side. Brilliant, and then lifting both heels up. Can you stay down? 
So I've just taken my fingertips to my knees and I'm just, or just touching your legs somewhere. I'm thinking about drawing the shoulder blades down. This is getting quite, really quite strong now. Try and keep that weight on the big toe joint and the little toe joint. No rolling out to your little toes. And the hey, half is up. Good. And again, again, give the legs a bit of a shake. Great. Let's stay uh, with the legs wide, but let's come back to a more parallel position now. And let's reach up. So try and actively touch the ceiling. I'm looking up. Both hands are up. And we're just taking that little adjustment in the loft hatch that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Just lengthening one side of your spine, just above your waistband, either side of your spine, lifting up and then holding both arms up. Stay looking up. Everything is lifted up. Shoulders are up around the ears. The rib cage is flaring. It's a little bit uncomfortable. And then I just want you to lower the arms and lower your eye line, but feel like you've got this lovely length in your spine. And then we're going to take one arm up and one arm down, and we're going to lengthen sideways. As you come through the centre, nice big breath in, breath out as you go over, breath in, breath out as you go over. Great, let's come back to those legs turned out again. So we're going to add a little bit onto this. You're going to take one arm up, you're going to go over to the side, you're going to bend your knees, swap arms and come up the other side. So imagine you're drawing this lovely circle I've got behind me. I'm drawing that outside circle with one arm and then I'm taking over with the other arm. The goal here as well is to look underneath that arm as you come up. So we're bending the knees, we're sort of going halfway. If that's as far as you'd like to go, stay there. Make sure you relax in the middle. If you want to go lower, brush the fingertips to all the way down to the floor, over to the side. Brush your fingertips, let your head relax. Try and get side bend at the beginning and a side bend at the end. One more for luck. All the way down, round and up. And there's my last one. Coming back to the centre. Brilliant. Reaches up side bends. Let's take a little uh, upper body roll around. So back to feet a bit more parallel. Hands at the behind your head. Interlace your fingers. Bring your elbows forwards. And we've already sort of warmed up the back a little bit. But let's go for a tiny bit more. I'm just going to go sideways first actually. I want you to lift your head up. Lift your, not just your head, sorry. Lift your chest up. I'm pushing my head into my hands. Like I'm doing that, but this arm is there. Pushing my head into my hands. I'm not just doing this. I'm actually lifting up. I'm trying to fold over this part of my spine, my thoracic spine. Your thoracic spine is your tightest area. And then we're going to try and take a circle there. So we're going to go all the way up and back, and we're going round and then back to the center and then change sides. Just creating a crease around this line here. So it's around the front of your ribs, around the sides and around the back. The upper body stays fairly still. And make sure you're breathing, not holding your breath. As in the upper body stays still in the arms. I shouldn't have said that, that doesn't make sense. The other body stays still in that position. Stays in that position, the lower body stays very still. I think that's what I meant to say there. Good, let's take some uh, chest and back lift. So we've warmed up shoulders, we've done the rib cage, we've done the side seam of our back. Let's think about the spine now, um, just the whole spine. So I'm just gonna turn sideways. So we're gonna take that chest lift again, but this time we're not holding the head in our hands. We're sticking the bottom out, we're rolling all the way down, maybe take the hands to the legs, relax the head, and then roll all the way back up again. Lifting the chest, sticking the bottom out, rolling all the way down. Enjoy the fluidity of your spine. Enjoy this lovely movement. Let it flow. Lifting the chest. Stick your bottom out, relax your chest over your thighs, let your head hang. 
coming up, protect your back by strongly pulling your belly button in, push the pubic bone forwards and then unravel. This should feel really nice and just get that spine moving in the same way we don't generally tend to move it very often. I'm going to stay sideways, we're going to take uh, a, a slightly different variation of that. So you're going to take your feet much wider. I've gone as wide as my yoga mat here. You're going to take a nice big, uh, like the sumo wrestler, but without actually putting your hands on your, on your legs, although you can do. In fact, let's put the hands on the legs for the moment. So fingertips in, elbows out to the side. Then you're going to unravel your spine all the way down. Then you're going to reverse that movement back into your sumo wrestler squat, as I call it, and then you're going to stand. Let's do a couple more of those. Sumo wrestler, unravel, reverse the movement, and then come up to stand. Sumo wrestler, unravel, reverse, and come up to stand. Now just make that a bit more fluid, and maybe don't have the hands on the legs. So you're there, you're all the way down, you're reversing to stand up. And there, all the way down, Reverse the movement, so lift the head and shoulders back into that natural curve of the spine. It plays havoc with your clothing, that one. Good, we are going to take our hands on our shoulders. So feet are wide again, shoulder width apart. And we're just going to rotate, so this is the hula hoop overlap. Imagine you've got a hula hoop around your shoulders, around level with your elbows. The elbows are touching the insides of that hula hoop. And as you rotate, there's gonna be an overlap. An overlap here at the front and the back, and then again, an overlap here at the front and the back. But you only, you'll only get an overlap if you let your ankles, your hips, and your shoulders all rotate. So make sure that that is actually happening. And then we are going to, I've oh, just got a message come up on my screen. I wonder if that will come up on the video. That'd be interesting. Uh, let's let the arms relax. So keeping the head facing forwards. So again, thinking about mobilising the body as a whole. We've done, the, we've done all, the, all the areas. And this is that last thing that I try and do in our, in our warm-ups, is to mobilise the spine on a rotational plane. And just finish off this movement by looking behind you. Make sure you're breathing, let those ankles, hips, shoulders, everything rotate. Good, and get that spine really mobilised. We are going to go hands on the hips. Ah, oh, yes, one more thing I wanted to do then. So this is going to come into, uh, we're going to use this movement in a moment. So just clasping your hands together. So we were just let, allowing everything to rotate. We were allowing the shoulders and the hips and the ankles to rotate. And now I want you to try and keep your hips square to the front. And you're just going to take your hands, clasp your hands from side to side. And I want you to twist your shoulder girdle. So another way of doing this is to have your hands on your shoulders. Twist the shoulder girdle only. Hips stay still because what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to have the leg lifted, the hips and the legs are staying still, but I want you to really try and rotate that upper body towards the, uh, the leg that's in front. So you're going in, in opposition, which is the, the natural way. Good, so then we are going to take our hands on our hips for a knee fold into a diagonal line. I'm going to turn sideways. So some one-legged work. Uh, Try and start on your weaker leg if you know you've got a weaker leg. Popping the hands on the hips just so that you've got this image of the, uh, the tissue box staying nice and square to your front. So the two things you're going to think about now, the tissue box staying square and then the hip hinge. So we're going to take a knee fold, so I'm standing on my weaker leg, a knee fold square to the front, standing leg is straight. We're going to take a hip hinge and then we're going to bend this standing leg as much as you can so that you come into a diagonal line. That back foot is uh, touching the floor. My pitch forwards, so I'm in this nice diagonal line. So I'm in a straight line here from 
the head to the standing foot. I'm in a diagonal line here from the head to the, the moving foot, if you like. Try not to do this one. Try not to give them a kink in that line. So drop that, drop that uh, hip down. So this knee will probably come a little bit more forwards than, than, uh, than we would normally do if we were doing a single leg squat. So we're there. But I want it to really straighten the leg, really bend the leg. So already I'm starting to feel some work. The shape of your spine should not change at all. Lifting, standing up really tall, pitching the weight forwards, taking that hip hinge. Nothing has changed here. I've got my hands here. There's no change whatsoever. The movement is coming from the hip. I'm going to stay on my same leg, but I'm just going to turn around the other way. So the movement, the hip hinge is coming here. So this is straight leg. This is bent leg, hinging over this hip. My tissue box is still facing forwards. All four corners are facing forwards. That should be starting to get a little bit uncomfortable now. Should be some nice strong work going through this standing leg. Hopefully in the buttock but maybe not. Maybe somewhere else. Good. Then we're going to finish off. I need to stay sideways I think I wasn't going to hit the, hit the wall. Uh, we're going to finish off with that uh, adding that rotation of the shoulders. So when I'm back, I'm here. <laughs> I'm losing my balance today. So I'm turning my shoulders as much as I can with that to that opposite hip. Hey, 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 hey. And then I'm standing nice and straight and lifting this leg and now I'm turning my shoulders the other way. So I can show you this position. So we're here. I'm trying to work this, this twist once I'm in the position. I'm going to turn my back right to the side again. So we're here, opposite to the front leg, the, the bent leg, the standing leg, and opposite to the raised knee. Take your time, give me at least 10 of these if you can. My leg, my standing leg, is on fire. And I'm working that rotation. I'm working on my balance, my strength, my stability in the hips. I've lost count actually, slightly distracted by the stress, and oh, I think that's enough. Good, but the sad thing is, well the good thing is, we need to do the other side. So I'm going to change side, I'm going to face this direction. So we're lifting the knee, so initially hands out to the, hands out to the side, uh, just hands on your hips, elbows out to the side I should say, sorry not hands out to the side, and then we're pitching forwards. So, lifting and taking that diagonal line. Straight line, floor to ceiling, straight leg. Bent leg, diagonal line. Top through the head to that back foot. Straight line, diagonal line. Tissue box, square to your front. If you're using a yoga mat, it's quite nice to just keep your everything square in relationship to that to that yoga mat. Getting a little bit out of breath now as well, talking all too much maybe. So we're here and here, here and here. So when that standing leg, this is my stronger side, so I'm got a little bit more capacity here. When that standing leg starts to feel as the same as the other side, as bad as the other side, uh, as worked as the other side, if you like, then start to add your rotation in. So I'm coming to that opposite hip, opposite heel, trying to really twist my shoulders, but the hips and the legs staying still. Then I'm into that nice lunge and twisting the shoulders again. Hold the position, at least 10 of these. Make sure you straighten that standing leg. Now bend that standing leg. Straighten and bend. Straighten and bend. Whoo. Try and stay with it. 
Try and watch the alignment of that standing leg, that working leg. When you start to get tired, it will start, the alignment will go a little bit out of your control, if you like. Keep the knees over the toes. I'm starting to lose it now. I'm going to do a couple more. Remember when you would really like to stop, just do a couple more. And I think that's enough. Okay, good job. Well done. Whew. Okay, so let's take those legs wide now. Really nice and wide. Just in clothing. Uh, so we've got the insteps nice and parallel. We're going to take a hip hinge forwards from your hips, so stretching the backs of the legs. So pitching all the way forwards. Remember your fat, pop your hands on your shoulders, elbows out to the side. So a nice straight line, hopefully, uh, from elbow to elbow across my shoulder girdle, as opposed to allowing this to happen. Don't let that happen. Lift those shoulders up. Really nice straight line. Work the muscles around the shoulder blades in the back. Pitch the weight forward so that you're getting a good hamstring stretch. Coming up, if you look from the side, there should be no change in that back. You might be here and you might be finding hamstring stretch. That's absolutely fine. I can get a little bit lower, but you don't really need to go any lower than parallel to the floor. If you need to adjust it, tap the heels, lift your chest up a little bit, arch that lower back maybe a tiny bit more. And that's just from there. So remember, our focus at the moment is stretching the backs of the legs. From there, take the arms out to the side. So we're in this beautiful parallel line, parallel to the floor, and we're just going to circle fingertips. Keeping those shoulders lifted. And then we're circling the other way. A golf ball side circle. Wonderful. And then let's hang from the waist. All the way down. Soften your knees. In fact, let's bend the knees. Let's let the head hang. Touch your hands to your toes. Reach your hands forwards. Hands to your toes. Reach your hands forwards. Make sure your knees are going over your toes in that nice wide position. Touch forwards. Touch toes. Touch forwards. No weight here. I can just do a little shake of the hand. There's no weight here. There's a lot of compression in this hip joint again, but that's absolutely fine. Just tiny bit walk the fingertips forwards. Let the head hang and just stay there and breathe. Lengthening that spine. Feel the stretch from the crown of your head to the sacrum. Maybe just take a little bit of movement from side to side. Good, and then let's bring the hands onto your mats. Let's take the legs even wider still, if you can. Turn the toes out a little bit. Now we've got the hands underneath the shoulders. We're just going to move from side to side, making sure the knees go over the toes. Every part of this should be feeling quite a strong stretch somewhere. Good, and then I'm going to turn all the way around to the side. So this foot is underneath this knee, and then I'm going to just move around a little bit. Do what you can here. I'm sort of bending the back knee, bending the front knee, just having a bit of a wiggle about. You could drop that back knee down. You could do this, straightening and bending that front leg. If you can, keep that back leg off. Take your hand underneath your shoulder, and then lift the arm up to the ceiling. Try and lift out of the floor, try and touch the ceiling, dropping the hips down a little bit. So a really nice rotation in that spine. You could maybe drop the knee down, maybe try and get those elbows down towards the floor, relaxing that back, back foot. Whatever you do, just breathe, move, don't get stressed, have a bit of movement around within it. And then we're swapping from side to side. Swap into the other side, I should say. Uh, so into this lunging position, if you can. Try and repeat the same stuff on the other side. Try and don't just do the stuff that you're good at. Do the ones that you find a little bit more challenging. 
you could put that knee down. Remember, if you're putting the knee down, try not to take your hips all the way back onto your heels. That's called cheating. You just want to get to the point where you can straighten this front leg, because that's what, that's what that one's about. Then if you can, so this can also be done with that knee down, but if you can have the leg off, hand underneath your shoulder, lift up to the ceiling, hold it there. I'm trying to touch the ceiling, dropping my hips down, getting that back leg nice and straight, trying to almost lift out of my hand that's on the floor, creating a straight line through my shoulders and breathing. That's quite a nice stretch on those outside thigh and hip. And then if you can, again, same sort of area for stretching, elbows down towards the floor. If there's no way that that inside elbow is gonna go down, just stay here, but stay even. Try not to be twisted. Well done. I'm going to pop my uh, big toes together, open up my knees nice and wide, take my hips back on my heels and just have a little sway from side to side there, taking my ear towards my shoulder. And I'm just going to move the camera down slightly so that we're pretty much going to be on the floor now, I think. Good. Okay, great. So let's come back to all fours. Um, so in all fours square box position, so hands are underneath your shoulders, make sure you're spreading your hands nice and wide, th thumbs, and th thumbs and fingers far apart, knees underneath the hips, spine in its uh, natural curve, same as if, as if you were standing up, make sure the chin stays slightly tucked in, you're lifting the head up out of the floor. Let's initially take some spine circles. Just a couple in each direction. So hands and hips stay fairly still and you're rotating like your spine is a skipping rope. Good, and then let's take some uh, circles in the other direction. So spine circles are vertical circles. These are horizontal circles, otherwise known as the industrial floor cleaner. You're going from side to side, your torso stays the same, but the goal here is actually to stress wrists. Stress wrists, stress hands, take your weight down through your shoulders, through into those wrists on the floor. We need to have this strength in our upper body, in our hands, in our wrists. We need it all the time just to be able to support our own body weight. It's not that, that difficult. Then come back to a nice square position. Uh, tuck your, curl your toes under, so you're lifting your knees off, you're just gonna hover. When you lift the knees off, just slightly, try not to let anything change in that shape of your body completely. So the only thing that's really changing should be the knees lifting off. Uh, and you're working hard to switch on and stay strong in your center. So holding it there for a little bit. If your back's feeling a bit vulnerable, this is a really good one to do, just to remind yourself how to brace, keeping everything strong and still. Good, then you're gonna let those uh, legs, those knees come back down again. Let's turn the thumb, turn the fingertips in towards each other a little bit, so you're here. So your thumb's becoming straight line, your fingertips are angled in, uh, and hands quite wide, just shoulder width apart. So we're gonna take some press-ups. So wide press ups, so wide hands, wide apart, and the elbows are gonna come down to the floor. I'm showing you the absolute basic press up. There's no change other than my arms bending, my elbows bending, and my torso hinging from here. There's none of this going on, no extra movement with the head. Keep the head in the correct position. Keep your shoulders forwards over your fingertips, none of this going on either, taking those hips back over the heels. But if you want more of a challenge, take those knees back. I would pick your feet up and cross your ankles over and then drive the hips forwards. This is your whole body, staying in a straight line. You're there. I can just about go all the way down to the floor, but that's much more challenging. I'm happy if you just bend the arms a little bit but notice no change in my body. No sticking the bottom out. This is the old half and half position, which some of you try and cheat with. Keep those hips forwards, body in a straight line. And obviously then we've also got, which I can probably only do 
one, half a one, there we go, so from your toes, this is the strongest one, oh, I don't know, a couple, but I can't go all the way down to the floor, that's absolutely fine, just challenge yourself there with a few of those, and then, how do those wrists feel, oh yeah, they need a bit of, bit of work, so make some apple crumble, twiddle, fingertips round, circle the wrists, hold on to your Clasp your hands, circling around that way. Make a fist, stretch out, make a fist, stretch out. Really try and make this whole area nice and warm. It's, it's stressed at the moment, now get it warm, get some healing, healing juices there. Good, until this area of your arm, your forearm, it starts to feel almost as uncomfortable as that buttock or the legs did when we were doing the, the standing leg work. Maybe not quite that much, but... Brilliant, okay. For the next section, we're going to be lying on our backs. So come to lie down your mat in the base position. So settle yourself down if you can. Make sure you're in a good base position. Your feet and knees are in line with your hips especially knees, so that's the hip bones. Think about your neutral pelvis. So I'm not sure if you can see, but I can actually get my hand all the way underneath there. But my, my lower back has got quite a good curve to it, but I know I'm in neutral because my pubic bone and my hip bones are on the same plane. Collarbone nice and open. Try and think about the shoulder blades being flat and even. Tucking the chin in, lengthening the back of the neck. But celebrate the natural curve. There's a curve at the nape of the neck, there's a curve in the lower back. Not everyone's got a great curve. Think about the rib cage. So we tend to, and I'm a little bit like this right now, we tend to be a bit flared in the ribs when we first lie down. This is the ribs flaring, they're sticking out. And then if you can see, I've got quite a big gap underneath my, my ribs at the back. I just want to try and let that soften and relax. It sometimes takes a little while. So the test is, are your ribs connected at the front? Are they relaxed? but also your lowest ribs quite close to your waistband should be in contact with the mat, ideally. And then we're here. Then you're gonna think about a marble in your, uh, in your torso. So that marble is gonna stay absolutely in the center. If we were to take a pelvic tilt, so from here, if we were to roll the pelvis, tuck the pelvis under, push the waistband into the mat, so pubic bone is higher than hip bones, that would make the marble roll towards my lower ribs at the, at the back. And then if I come back to neutral, I'm bringing the marble back into the center. If I was to take my hips from side to side, like a seesaw, like we do in, in pelvic clocks, that's making the marble roll from side to side. We don't want either of those movements. Uh, and we're just gonna start by, am I gonna be able to slide? Yeah, I can slide my leg along the floor. So I'm going to slide my leg along the floor and then come back in. Because I'm half on the mat and then I'm, I can catch the mat when I come back in, keep the leg in contact with the floor, but just slightly hover it, which is going to make it a little bit harder. Elbows on the floor, hands in spatula position onto your hip bones and then coming back in. Your goal is to keep your marble absolutely still. My rib cage is connected pelvic floor is slightly lifted, lower abdomen is drawing back towards the mat, towards the floor. I'm switched on here. Not working hard, but I'm switched on. Good, then we're going to take a knee fold. Knee fold position, knee directly above the hip, foot slightly higher than the knee, and lower down. Knee fold, lower down. Notice, use your hands, check it out. Is there any change in that lower back? Remember, when we tend to bring this knee, if we bring this knee in too far, your lower back will tuck under. Don't let that happen. If the knee's too far away or the foot's too low, you're going to be straining on here and also making potentially that lower back arch too much. Be really accurate. We're going to add on to the knee fold. So we're just, this should be really, really easy for the vast majority of you, but make sure you concentrate. Adding onto the knee fold, 
a leg extension. Just lift your head up, have a little look. I would like your knees to be on the same level. Come back to a knee fold and lower. Knee fold, perfect position. Extend, let knees, thighs level. Come back into a knee fold and then lower. A couple more of those. Breathing, just keep the breathing nice and neutral. Make sure there's no tension in the shoulders as we do this. Whoopsie, that was a really rubbish coming back in. So there. So what I did when I just now, I let my foot drop when I came back in. Come back to a perfect knee fold. Hands on the hips, elbows on the floor. Check for pressure through the elbows. Good, okay, all relatively easy. Now let's just let that leg drop out to the side. Much more difficult now. It's a much more challenging position, uh, a movement I should say. Challenging for the pelvis. The pelvis will want to follow that heavy leg as it goes out to the side. Your goal is to keep your marble still, elbows equally weighted. Keep the leg that's staying still, keep it still. Don't let it move. It will, might want to counterbalance the fact that this leg is going out to the side. This should be the hardest challenge, position-wise or movement-wise, in this, in this whole thing. Good. Then you're going to place your hands behind your head. Interlace your fingers. Elbows are forwards. You're coming up clearing your shoulder blades for an abdominal curl. Think about that marble again. Don't let it change. What I quite often see when people start their abdominal curls is two things. Either the pelvis tucks under so that marble would roll back towards your spine or we push up. You're pushing your marble up towards the, up towards the ceiling combined with a little pelvic tilt as well. Nothing should change. Remember the head is heavy. Elbows, arms are doing the work. Try and keep the gap between your chin and your chest pretty much the same. Connect your rib cage to your hips. When you lower, don't just let it all relax and collapse because then you've got to reset. You haven't really got time to reset each time. Just hold everything in place. So now let's add an abdominal curl with a leg slide. When you bring the leg back in, try and come a little bit higher, then lower. Swap legs. Abdominal curl and leg slide. Try and lift a little bit higher and lower. Abdominal curl, leg slide. Lift a little bit higher and lower. Abdominal curl. Lift a little bit higher as you come back in. No change in the torso and lower. Let's take a knee fold. Let's go straight into leg extension. Stay up, clear the, keeping those shoulder blades clear. When you draw the knee back in, draw it a little bit more lift, not much, and then lower, don't relax. Knee fold, leg extension. Little bit more lift as you come in, be really accurate. Four more of these. Knee fold, head is heavy. Let the leg extend. Come up slightly more to meet it and lower. Knee fold, extension. Coming in and up and lower. One more time each side. Knee fold, be accurate. Think about that marble. there, knee fold, extension, coming in and up, and lower, good job, come up to comfy position, shoulder blades comfortably touching the floor, but you're working a little bit, head is totally supported, let the knee drop out to the side, come back in, let the other knee drop out to the side, you've got no help with your hands on your hips now, keep that torso absolutely still. Because you're in comfy position, you can have a little look. Are those hips staying absolutely level? Relax the foot that's on the floor. I'm in comfy position. I'm working, but I'm not working too hard. We're about to work really hard for the next four. You're going to come up, clear the shoulder blades. Stay up. Stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up. And 
and one more each side. Keep those elbows forwards, head is relaxed. Abdominals are working really hard. And oh, have a little whew, drop down. Roll the head from side to side. And breathe. Oh, nice work everyone. Brilliant. I just want to finish off with one more thing on the abdominals. Uh, we are going to come up head and shoulders. This is completely different now. I want you to draw your belly button in. I want you to push your lower back into the mat. I want you to come up on both knees, have both knees in. Uh, everything is rounded. I'm actually trying to get my head towards my knees. This is really tough. Try not to let the head be hanging back here because that's going to be awful on the neck. Really pull everything in and then pull that knee in even more, right tight to this shoulder. So the shin is parallel to the floor, feet are at the same height, then I'm going to swap legs. There's no change in my torso, I'm drawing in, I'm rounded with my back, hanging on to this knee for dear life, which is what's pulling it in. Don't have the knee out there, use it, hug it in and compress the hip joint, it's good for it. And then we're going to switch and switch and switch and switch. Nice breath out each time. Adding on to this, if you want to hug the knee in, rotate those shoulders, keep your heads forwards. Like we did earlier on, hips are staying still, just the shoulders are rotating. I'm taking my opposite shoulder to that inside of that knee. I'm still pulling the leg in. Ooh, I'm amazed I'm able to talk. I'm going to do another six, five, four, three, two, one, and Oh dear. Stretch those legs away, stretch the arms away. Big breath in. I really hope you're appreciating the, uh, the amount of work this is and you're not able to stop just because you're in the comfort of your own home. Oh, well done. Good. Well done if you, if you stuck with it and stayed with me. Uh, two more things to do, two more positions to do. So we're going to line our side. Let's lie on our side in a nice straight line. When you're in your straight line, try and lift that waist away from the, from the mat. Make sure your shoulders are stacked, your hips are stacked. Lifting, let's lift the top leg up on its own. Let's lift the underneath leg up to join it. Let's flex both feet and then lower both legs. So pointing the foot to lift up, pointing the underneath foot to lift up, flexing the feet. So here your test is, can you get your insteps together, same as you do when you're standing, hopefully, and then lower. Flexing, sorry, pointing to lift, pointing to lift, flexing and lowering. One more. Point to lift, point to lift. Try and lift that underneath leg up to the top leg. Flexing here, holding here. Can we take some marching feet? One foot is flexing, the other foot is pointing. Can we take a balance here? Trying to keep that waist lifted away. Trying to slightly lift my ear off of my arm, so I'm lengthening out through the crown of my head. Ooh, I'm rolling back a little bit. Grand finale, keep the uh, marching feet going. And we're there for another 10 or so. Brilliant, keeping that shoulder down. Waist lifted, rib cage connected. Excellent. Bend the knees in, sit yourself up. I'm gonna swap, uh, let's swap legs actually. So you're still facing me, so you can still see what's going on. You could just roll over to the back. So we're here, all on the other side. Try and think about legs being the same length. If you let your pelvis collapse, if you let that underneath side collapse, you'll end up with one leg longer than the other. Both legs level because the waist is lifted, the pelvis, the hips are stacked, one on top of the other. That arm just, that head slightly hovering off the arm. 
lifting one leg up, not too high because you want the other leg to lift to meet it. Pointed feet, flex the feet, lower both legs. Lift up and lift up and flex and lower both legs. Lift up, lift up, flex and lower. Lift and lift, flex. One more. Keeping the shoulders down. Good, let's stay up. Let's flex one point the other. Holding those legs up. We tend to start to let them drop down a little bit. Keeping the waist lifted, the rib cage connected. Balancing with that arm initially. And then let's take some arm waves. So just notice how that extra movement of the arm will start to challenge how this feels. One side is always easier than the other. This feels like my slightly more wobbly side. Make sure the hips stay stacked. Good. Excellent. Well done. Whew, roll over onto your tummy. Let's initially start with uh, the hands, backs of the hands, one on top of the other. Tuck your rib cage in, open up the, the legs at the hips, have the legs just hip width apart, and just put your forehead on top of, the, on top of your hands. Have a little look before you set yourself up with this one. So just from here, all I'm going to do, in fact, I'm gonna go fingers on top of fingers, is just lift the head and neck so it's in line with the rest of my shoulders. So it's just this amount of movement. It's not, not a great big movement. Just lifting to hold there, and then let's hold there. Then let's bring the arms into a capital E. So what I mean by that is your arms are here. So not down here, not out there with the hands, a capital E with your head being the, the middle position, if you like. And then from our capital E, so the head is lifted so this this part is in line if you can i'd like you to lift and lower the whole arm in that capital e your test is that the hand and the elbow lift and lower at the same time what tends to happen is we lift the elbow first then we don't get the hand up very high and then we do that so lift and lower just hover the arm back down. You're holding that head, just again hovering off the floor, connecting the rib cage, pushing the pubic bone into the mat a little bit, protecting that lower back. Good. Now bring your arms down by your side, so you're in a low V. And in fact, let's let's uh, let's go into the dark. So from here, so let the tip of the nose touch the touch the floor, touch the mat. Lift your shoulder tips up on their own. Lift the back of the head and neck where we just were. Lift the arms off the floor. So the backs of the hands are towards the floor. Rotate arms, rotate thumbs outwards, and now lift your back and your head and your shoulders. So I'm now resting on my bottom three or four ribs. Hold that there. Let's take a few circles inwards. So I've opened up my legs a little bit and I've slightly turned my legs out just to help support that position. It just feels nicer for me. And then let's turn the palms up, let's relax the legs, let's lower everything to go again. So shoulder tips only, arms up, arms only, nice and straight. Lift the back of the head and neck as you rotate the arms out. Reach those fingertips towards your feet. I've rotated my legs a little bit. I've pushed my pubic bone into the mat a tiny bit more, and then just circles. Little finger side into the body. Staying there, breathing, breathing, breathing. Well done, and have a little relax. Fantastic, hands underneath the shoulders. Come back, hips onto your heels, 
Let's just take that nice stretch we did earlier. Uh, toes, big toes together, knees nice and wide, hips all the way back. And then a slightly mad sway from side to side. Turn your head. So this is our, just our cool down. This is just about you having a bit of a wiggle about. There's those spine circles we did earlier. There's the horizontal circles. There's the curling the toes under, lifting the hips up, pushing the chest back, coming forwards again, dropping the knees down, relaxing, going again, if you would like to. There's bending one knee at a time. There's maybe taking some bear walks, hand first, make it a nice stretchy movement, then bring the foot in, hand, foot, going backwards, lead with the foot first, then the hand. Make every single step a new stretch. There's also coming down onto your knees, if you can, pushing the weight back. Coming into our deep squat, having a bit of a movement around within that, just turning from side to side. Remember, don't take too much notice of my heels. If you can get your heels down here, that's where you want to be. That's always my challenge, so I want to go a little bit wider with my feet. I'm just uh, turning from side to side a little bit. You could drop the knee in, drop the knee in the other side. Just move, you could come up to here, you could have gone halfway down again, you could take a great big movement, you could take a rotation here, threading the needle through, you could be all the way back here. And then just coming back all the way, let's curl those toes under, walk your feet in or walk your hands back, I'm unraveling my spine all the way to the top, nice big shoulder roll, don't think my head's quite in the picture now, but big reach up to the ceiling, push your palms together, draw your elbows to down as you lift up internally, thank you so much for joining me, uh, please let me know how it went.